Welcome everyone. We are so glad that you are joining us today. And I am very excited to introduce our special guest, Sergio Magaña. Sergio Magaña is a respected healer and a practitioner of the Toltec lineage of Mesoamerica. He is trained in this special science Nahualism, and they are the spiritual teachings based on the altered states that we experience during the dream time. Sergio Magaña, it is a great pleasure to have you joining us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. And I wanted to say beautiful your Spanish. You said perfectly, Sergio Magaña. <laughs> and I'm really thrilled. Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome, my pleasure. And I'm so excited for all the audience here today because we are going to be talking about something that is not really you know, frequently heard about. It, it seems like a... Uh, like a secret science, Nahualism, and the dream times. So I wanted to ask you, why was dreaming so important for the ancients? For the ancient ones, actually, uh, dreaming was like the base of what, the, uh, what we call our reality the waking state. So uh, actually Nahualism, the the world the word that you that you said that is almost unknown, but everyone that read Carlos Castaneda, for example, in the 60s, know perfectly that word because everything was about the Nahual and and that. Nahual uh, comes from uh, uh, Nahuatl, Nahuatl is a language word that was spoken by Toltecs, by Aztecs, a, an ancient version by Teotihuacan, so a long, long body of knowledge. And so the word is Nehua, that means I. So Nahual is the who I am really, actually. So Nahualism would be like the knowledge of who I am. And it was referring to the energetic body of the that we use for dreaming and the one that we will be deaf that actually it's it's a huge change of 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 view because they were naming i that energetic body that will be similar to spirit in a different way but kind of and then the tonal or or the or or this physical body and the one that is speaking now with you in the interview is uh, was only named like the one that you are with the sunlight when we were supposed to be uh, awake because it's it's an ancient knowledge so the real i is the one that you were dreaming the one that you were, will be dead or that you were dead and from there you were creating this reality so actually nowalism uh the science of of dreams was not to understand yourself and that a little bit, but it was to create your life from there, uh, the waking state, and also to live like uh, um, the main life would be the one that happened when you are dreaming. That will be uh, uh, also the training where to, uh, in the moment that you die to go to the next life. So it was hugely important, actually, uh, it was like the base. It was uh, at the end only taught to priests, to the warriors, and to the rulers. Wow, that is so fascinating. And you know, when I, I listen to you, what I'm hearing is that the dream state was the most powerful state, not when we were awake, walking around with everyone, and that from that state, we could then create 
our lives through dreaming. You know, when I hear that, it it reminds me of the concept of lucid dreaming. And I was wondering if you could, you know, explain to us and, you know, the whole audience, what is lucid dreaming? Yes, of course. Actually, uh, nowadays, uh, most of the knowledge about dreams uh, goes to, to practice or to try to do lucid dreaming. That is a modern world. Lucid dreaming is to be aware that you are dreaming when you are dreaming. So, and, and of course, now many universities are trying it to help your life or to improve in sports and that, but it's kind of new in the Western, in the, in the Western mind. So for the ancients, it was a natural thing to be lucid in your, in your dreams, actually, to be aware. And actually, you had so many instructions of what to do in order to get a result. So if you were flying, it wasn't to get entertained and to be and to be just hanging out there. It was to go to certain places to visit all the spirit of the sun, to find your greatest destiny, or the or the dream body of the moon, to get certain favors for the for this uh, reality for the waking state, or you would go actually to visit like the gods or the essences that were seen that as parts uh, that that are inside of you and outside of you. So in a dream, everything is mind. So you will be interacting with them uh, exactly like like we are now you and me, <laughs> like that in the screen, you are like my dream and I am and I am like your dream. No? <laughs> so we will be and it was uh, uh, it is fascinating fascinating because it goes um of course you need to be lucid and to have certain consciousness but it's with the purpose of of creating things and also to find new knowledge that for example you still don't know there there is a place to visit in dreamland that is named the place of the knowledge that you will teach that you still don't know. And then you go there and you get some new teachings, then to bring them here. Uh, it's such a huge body of knowledge and uh, it makes so entertaining and useful every night. It is not like, oh, okay, I'm tired and just uh, let's let's finish the day. It, it actually it's the starting of the next day and, and the rest of your life. What do you do that night? I really love that because when I think about my life and our lives in the world these days, we are so busy, right? We're busy with everything. It's almost like a full job to manage our lives. And going from that as such, it becomes challenging to find time and space to really feel into the lives we want to create, right? There's no space anymore. And so having the ability to go in the dream time, you know, with, it feels like with freedom, freedom to connect, and I love the fact that, you know, you were talking about connecting to the gods, connecting to the sun, the moon. And I know that you're very passionate about the sun. And, you know, tell us about the sun that we are having right now and, you know, the influence of the masculine and the feminine. Of course. And what you said for me, it's very important because uh, everyone has to sleep eventually <laughs> every day uh, so then you are finding this time uh, to do your disciplines so and then you can see that we are not that busy because in an average people of 80 years 30 more or less will be sleeping so you have 30 years to do your disciplines <laughs> that, that is a huge amount of time that in other way would be wasted and uh, and i want and i wanted to tell this because to the audience so that they think 
do you want to be in a blackout totally 30 years of your life or you want to do something and then life simplifies because we can be really busy working and doing and, and many things in the day but you still have a lot of time to enjoy to create to evolve and so and these times are uh, the best ones for that sons in the in the Toltec tradition were uh, of course the physical sun but they uh, they were named sons that al also in Mayan king is sun a uh, periods of time so uh, the long count the long count that that is very similar to precession of equinoxes or the one of the astrological eras that they split in 12 that are like the Pisces era and the uh, Aquarius era and that it's of 26,500 years that for the Toltecs were split in four that gives you a period of 6,625 years they were named sons metaphorically because they are based in the four like the four main moments of the day like the dawn midday sunset midnight so they are compared to that so the the new sun that we have just started that if everyone uh, is denying a huge shift that is happening is that he's not seeing anything <laughs> because actually the prophecy was uh, that uh, we will uh, stop looking outside to start looking inside and the pandemic and everything even the cell phones that make you look here in the in the middle of the way are in the in the way to to enter so this uh, is like the new sun the sixth sun that uh, in in the count in the in the in the aztec toltec count is the more feminine one why because if you see the previous ones if they start at in the dawn in the dawn is still night and but but with the light starting midday is totally light so like like the waking state that you are looking outside the sunset is still there but now it's one of midnight so the main force is ruling the moon that uh, is more much more feminine than the sun also the night the night that is the darkness the void from which everything starts the darkness from which light came that is like the great great mother and also the it's going back to the earth to our inside so it's it's not completely but a much more feminine time and actually uh, in the uh, i did a book that is named the real Toltec prophecies because many years ago i wrote other one in which i put that the the for the the count of the of the central mexico the, the the change wasn't going to be in 2012 wasn't going to be in 2021 and actually i wrote many years ago not 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 using what happened that in 2020 it was said like the prophecy because we were transiting through the underworlds like we will get to the underworld of complete darkness in which everything will stop and only the ones that have inner vision will continue and what happened was was amazing you know, not <laughs> amazing but but for some ones because everything is stopped for most of the people and it was such a huge opportunity to enter so my publishing house went saw that and they told me you have the the, the correct uh count i said no no it wasn't me it was like the one of the center of mexico i was the only one that wrote about that because everyone was worried about the mayan count that of course is correct but it wasn't uh, because they were meeting every 52 years to to give new dates to the calendar so the one of 2012 was included but then it came uh, other ones so uh now we are in that time in that time in which the normal explanations that 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 we have for the waking state like religion or that god wanted or uh, science are not enough 
we are looking for new things. And first of all, when we close the eyes, we face our thoughts and that that uh, mind that is talking tan, 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 tan. But then if you go deeper, you will face your dreams and you will see that what you are dreaming, it's becoming actually your reality. There was a phrase, uh, anonymous one of the Teotihuacans, one of the cultures uh, that had like the big pyramids of the sun of the moon that said, the one that doesn't remember or work with his or her dreams is like a living death because has no control of his or her waking state. When I heard it for the first time, I said I was part of the living death completely. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I thought I was kind of, of a noise. And I told my teacher, but it's also important what you think, what you eat, what you feel. And he told me, yes, of course, but that depends on what you dream. And I said, okay, I couldn't say no because I hadn't experienced. But then I saw that is true. That's why in every language, the you say the girl of my dreams, the house of my dreams is because you dreamt it before. And then you recognize it. I am totally convinced that deja vu is not that you lived it before. It's that you dreamt it before. It's so familiar that then you recognize it and you feel weird because it that image presented. It has happened to me now that I am aware people that I have dreamt that I ne I didn't know then they appear and I said, OK, the girl, the boss, the publisher, the whatever of my dreams. And and it's amazing. And actually, it is uh, here in Mexico, it was practiced by men, by women. But in many areas, dreaming, actually, these circles of dreaming were done much more by, by the women in the in the morning that they were just talking what they dreamt. And and actually, uh, sometimes they uh, I think they are better dreamers <laughs> or they they uh, that women have a lot more. Uh, it's easier for them if they decide. Uh, but of course. All of us have a masculine and a feminine part, and 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 we can practice. I have done of dreaming uh, one of the most important parts of my life, and I am a boy, <laughs> but I'm a boy girl like everyone else. It has both. That actually, the in the Tolkien tradition, they they named the 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 creative force Ipalnemowa, the great energy mother and father. But to use them, yeah, yeah, in dreaming is it's amazing. Mm, such incredible, incredible wisdom. I'm, I'm fascinated and excited by this. And, you know, when you were talking to us, this idea of people coming together, women coming together in a circle to dream together, to share the dreams together is something that you know, I hope and wish we can bring into our society today um, because it is only through our practices, our choices that we can bring through change. We can bring true collaboration. We can dream uh, for the new planet, the new way of doing things. I really love that. Mm dreaming the earth awake healing the earth through our dreams and right now i bring these wishes so it brings to mind this concept of creating our realities through our dreams and you know i know you talk about dream planting dream sowing can you tell us more about that? That is fascinating because actually there in modern science has studied like the, the cycles of dreaming and that, and there are many periods. So for example, before you fall asleep, uh, nowadays uh, that time is, is named the hypnagogic, that you are crossing through a hypnosis. 
in the old times, of course, they didn't use hypnosis and nothing. They just knew that before falling asleep, you could start doing certain practices or just uh, commanding your unconsciousness, the Nawal, uh, to tell, uh, I will dream with the serpent that will bring the healing of my knee. Or I will dream with the rain that will purify the war in Ukraine. Or I will dream with this and that within uh, knowing what was the archetype about because it wasn't an elephant for getting the, the healing because it was serpents for healing. And having certain logic is not that I will dream whatever I want in order, but knowing like the, the basic alphabet and, and trying to, uh, not trying, commanding the result that you will get from there. And, and it's amazing because actually uh, it was such a science because the ritual calendar here in, in, in the Toltec Diastics was of 260 plus 13 days. That is the cycle of pregnancy. So it was said that when you sowed a dream and then you dreamt it, it will last from one day because I have I have seen people that in the night they plant a dream and in the then they dreamt it and in the morning they are healed to nine months like the cycle of pregnancy to manifest. Of course, it sounds so beautiful and it is, but um, our unconsciousness is a little bit naughty and and it hasn't been told no n never what to do <laughs> so <laughs> we have dreamt actually we have been guided by the unconsciousness of the nawal like an undomesticated animal that actually is repeating many of the ancestral kind of dreaming so to go the first day like i will dream with this to get this it will say mm -mm. It's not that, but for some people, yeah, it is that they were just waiting for that, for example. But for me, for example, I started the, the planting or sowing dreams and I didn't start dreaming them until like four or five months. But then my life totally changed. And I began manifesting the things that I wanted from bestseller publishers because it can be very earthy to to healing, to helping the world, to heal my mother of a cancer, to so many, 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 many things. And uh, that's why when I started really being fascinated and I said, the world is how we dream it. No one knows it because they don't remember. <laughs> If they just remembered and knew how to interpret a little bit, because sometimes people think, I'm having a huge nightmare. Oh, I died. Dying in a dream is wonderful. It means change. <laughs> so, for example, uh, the other day I was talking with my mother, like I told you that she had a cancer. And I told her, I, I dreamt with you. And she told me, what did you dream? I said, that you died. And she said, but I said, that means that you are going to heal. Uh, okay, now she's, she's okay, she's clear, but that she will keep like that. And we were like really like uh, happy about, <laughs> about that, <laughs> that kind of dream. But in other way, I would have remember, oh, she will die. She will, the cancer will come back. And, and that is just knowing a little bit that is uh, of, of how dreams talk to you, because that is a huge change. So if someone dies in your dream, is that is having a huge change. So, and with that, then you recognize and you say, we are dreaming our life. And together, like you said, we are dreaming our planet and these circles of women and now that there should be of men and women with the masculine and feminine part together we can be you can be in the us someone in africa the maoris in australia we can be in our own bed having a common dream and it will make it so practical. We don't have even to, to meet each other <laughs> physically and to, but to be creating that synergy, that, that common wish in, in, the, in these nights. And then it will be really worth it to sleep and to live. Wow. I love, you know, what you are teaching us here 
uh, which is we have tremendous power within ourselves to create the reality we desire. And, you know, we have the power to command our subconscious as we falling asleep. I will dream about X, Y, Z. And what is required is to remember, to remember that we are able to do this. And also, um, you know, what I heard you say is really going deeper uh, than the surface of what we remember after we dream, you know, when you were explaining about the concept of death and what it really, really means. Um, and in, as you were talking about, you know, plant sowing, plant, I mean, dream planting, dream sowing, and the concept of birth, it really made me curious. What are the other feminine forces in dreams? This is a very important thing because worldwide, is known a concept, not everyone, but that is Quetzalcoatl, the feather serpent or the rising serpent. Uh, that actually, Quetzal means rising, Coatl serpent, is the rising of the serpent, so similar to Kundalini. And the enlightened ones that it was a level of knowledge that of course is represented by a feather serpent because the discipline was like the serpent rising and then exiting through your forehead and flying to the sun. And that's the masculine part. But there has been always a mystery, for example, in the Mayan temples, like that in the equinox, everyone see the shadow a serpent that is descending and then uh, joins the head to disappear. And many people, thousands now of people go to the Kukul Camp Pyramid to see the, the visual effects, but they don't know exactly what it is, almost because it was hidden for these times, not to be destroyed. Uh, so that is the shadow serpent the Sihuacoatl, the lady serpent that I get like, the feminine part of the Quetzalcoatl, that is the serpent of light that is rising with the serpent of shadow that is descending, that like yin yang, those are the ones that are creating. You cannot create only with the masculine one and you cannot create, but you need the feminine one that anchors the creations. So the shadow, the shadow, like the black, the darkness from which the light came, the mother. That is one of the main ones of the feminine uh, that actually it is. it was hidden in the Lady of Guadalupe, the main symbol of Mexico, that is the Virgin, that has a descending serpent in the left side that will be the feminine that ends in her feet, uh, in the cloth. And that is the shadow serpent, the feminine part. So one of the main dreams in lucidity could be to, to ask for something and join the rising serpent in a lucid dream and then the descending shadow serpent that will be that you are doing a yin yang. If you see, just continue it. And then join them through and then you are doing the alchemy, the tantra, the sexuality in dreams to create. That is the main one. Then the lady of medicine that was named Chico Mecoatl, the seven serpent lady, that actually are seven serpents. That is the, the universal medicine. That is the energy of the seven planets entering through the tonal callos or chakras. That is the feminine one, that is the universal medicine that goes even beyond, I think, of the caduceus that are just only two serpents. <laughs> Here we have seven. So that, that are the ones of each, the sun, the Mercury that was named Painali, Tlahuiscalpanteku, Clivenu, Venus, Shipesitlali, the star of shedding Mars, and all of them entering in you and doing the entire process. 
And finally, the one that is represented here by corn, but that is named the, the lady Shilonen, uh, that is uh, the lady of sustenance. That will is the sustenance given the abundance given by by the earth. That for other cultures could be wheat, could be uh, other things, but here dreaming you will know if you know about corns growing and that or that you made them grow in your dreams that you're in contact directly with this lady of the sustenance and you are creating the the abundance in your life it's not about dreaming with huge houses and that that maybe then after the corns you can buy huge houses and that is not <laughs> The archetype that drives you into that are like like these symbols that are so common for us, and and they are so old and so sacred. And I have tried them, and I have seen what they do. So it's it's beautiful. I I can just say that. <laughs> I agree. It's it's so beautiful and. What I love is that, you know, from what I'm hearing, there is so much support, you know, in these forces, these feminine forces of dreams, like sustenance, universal medicine. And so if we engage or when we engage in these practices, we are always supported. And that is, is really comforting because, you know, um, when people are not used to something, it can be like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to be in the dream by myself. So this is great. Um, Sergio, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, to share with our audience, do you have anything coming up, any workshops? I know that you teach around the world. Anything to share? Yes, of course. I will. I I am starting this these projects of of the lady of of uh, of of dreaming in the new in the new sun to teach it in the U.S. in England in many in many places of course in Mexico and for the first time now that is the time that of the teachings of the Siwakoatl the lady serpent I'm organizing a trip to the Mayan area for the next equinox so that we see the serpent descending. And in that moment, be creating, uh, because the temple has been waiting for people to know how to use it, not to say, not to see only and to take pictures of the, of the, of the serpent descending. So the ones that will be ladies or, or men, like rising the serpent of the Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl and getting the, the energy of the temple in the back to create a new, a new humankind. And that's my mo most uh, ambitious project uh, for mankind, for and and to really go with the respect and with the knowledge to use a temple that has been waiting because they didn't put the shadow just like for tourists uh, that and it, it doesn't have anything wrong uh, after many years in the way that that wants to be used to create to with our idea of a better world have like the 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 support of the temple of this shadow that will be the feminine creating that and all of that is in my website but sergiomagana.com but that is where uh, what uh, that is very similar to what we have been spo uh, speaking and waiting to do that in the in in this sacred temple wow i would love to be there I've actually been uh, there in, you know, during the equinox, uh, you know, at that temple um, where you, you actually like there is an alignment that happens and that create this uh, phenomenon. I don't want to say any more because I don't want to, you know, uncover any surprises. And I, and I love what you said about when we go to these temples to these places really remembering the sacred remembering that you know it's not just about taking pictures it's about dreaming um so 
You know, I wanted to really bring things here, given what we've talked about and the importance of dreaming and creating the reality we desire. What is one thing that you would like to leave the audience with today? Maybe a next step, maybe a practice, you know, something that will help our listeners. For example, dream sewing. Uh, in my book, The Toltec Secret is completely like you breathe here and then to the, le the left. But if you don't want to get, you want to try first, you can start just, I describe three feminine forces. So uh, just by, by repeating before falling asleep, when you get to your bed and that, today I dream with a, a corn. Today I dream with corn that brings me abundance. Today I bring I dream with corn, corn that brings me abundance until you fall asleep. Fum, 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 fum. And uh, then in the morning, try to, uh, when you wake up, just before moving, going to the toilet or whatever, to say, what was I dreaming? What happened before? What happened before? And try to see when you find the corns. Or also, if you need healing, physical healing, today I dream with the seven serpents that will heal my liver or that heal my liver or my eyes, whatever you need. And like that, and try to remember the dreams. Or today I dream with the light and shadow serpent and I create a wisdom. And like that, you can start before even being in a more advanced training, telling your own consciousness, I'm aware, I care about what I dream. I want these archetypes and I recognize the power of my dreams. And from there could be amazing changes. If you are disciplined, and like I told you, don't think that the first night, because we are doing it, because in the Western mind, we are used to to uh, wait for satisfaction <laughs> the same day. I hope there have been so many people. But like I told you, I had to wait for four or five months before I started dreaming them. And actually, I was kind of disappointed. I told my uh my teacher and I had to say what he told me. That's the that, that's how screwed you are. So keep practicing. And I said okay. And I kept practicing. <laughs> and eventually I got the dreams that I was planting, and and my life changed. So uh, I'm a testimonial, but I am not a testimonial of that. I went for fast food and I got them. I had to keep doing, and and the dreams in the in at the beginning were the same ones and uh, than always. But I have seen in many, many of my students that they normally some some people in the first night and they dream it and that. And I'm so proud. It's not like it's, this is not a competence. This is about about ourselves. But like that is uh, today I dream with corns. <laughs> today I create substance uh, for uh, buying my house or for paying my rent. Uh, da, 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 da. And because dreaming is for the earthy things and for the spiritual, spiritual flight. Wow, powerful practice. And you know, three key areas, abundance, healing, wisdom, abundance with the lady of corn, healing with the seven uh, serpents and wisdom with the light serpent, Quetzalcoatl and the shadow serpents right so we have that and continuing to commit to those practices thank you so much sergio magana for your incredible wisdom your willingness to share what a great session thank you everyone no. for listening thank you thank you so much a big hug